The movie is set in the year 2070. Many renowned scientists of the world are distressed, because of the risk of a worldwide drought because of water scarcity. To prepare for such a situation beforehand, a group of researchers are sent to the Balhae Research Station on the moon. Their first experiment is performed on a fish inside a tank. They expose it to a few drops of a mysterious liquid similar to water. Initially, it causes the fish to suffocate but then, the molecules multiply, forming more water and eventually filling up the tank. In short, the fish managed to create a survivable environment on its own because of the mysterious liquid. Although the first experiment was a success, something mysterious caused the station to close soon after and the base was forgotten. Five years later in 2075, the forecast comes true and the world is hit with a critical worldwide water shortage. It has resulted in an all-time high infant mortality rate due to various infections and diseases caused by the consumption of contaminated water. Government and private organizations in South Korea are vigorously investing in mega-vertical farms in hopes of reducing water usage. Moreover, the government has divided the public into separate groups and each group gets different quality and quantity of water, depending on the group's importance to human survival. Expectedly, the scheme isn't popular with most of the general public as they are now deprived of clean water. Then, we are introduced to a Korean space agency named SAW. The agency, led by Director Choi, is planning to send a crew to the Balhae Lunar Research Station. It is the same abandoned research facility on the moon where the fish experiment was conducted. It hides many government secrets, some of which might even solve the water problems on Earth. The crew consists of nine members, all led by Captain Han, a soldier for the space agency. The mission is especially dangerous because in the last research, 117 crew members died in the base. They are told that the deaths were caused due to a radiation leak but Dr. Song doesn't want to believe it. For the mission, Choi has roped in Dr. Song, an astrobiologist. She initially turned down the mission but later changed her mind for the sake of finding out the truth about her late sister who also lost her life in the Balhae accident five years ago. As a reward, Dr. Song is given a lifetime gold membership which gives her unlimited access to safe and clean drinking water. Director Choi briefs the crew about the mission. It turns out that they have to retrieve at least one capsule of a research sample from the station on the moon. However, the information on what the samples consist of is supposedly lost and unknown. All they know is that the samples must be kept at a regulated low temperature range. Dr. Song suspects that the saw is purposely withholding information about the parcel's content but she still decides to go on the mission. On the day of the takeoff, the main pilot is replaced by a pilot named Jisoo. The crew isn't happy with the last-minute change but Captain Han orders everyone to stick it out. The spacecraft takes off and safely enters the Earth and later the Moon's orbit. However, during the landing, it malfunctions, and they crash on the Moon's surface, 7.6 kilometers northwest of their destination. The mission's spacecraft falls off a cliff and the surviving crew is forced to travel to the station by foot. A former researcher at the Balhae station named Wong has sustained serious injury. Halfway through the journey, he stops and is unable to continue. Since he has been to the station before for research, he seems to know something that the others don't. He tries to convey a message to the crew but ends up passing away, delving a serious blow to the crew's morale. Nevertheless, they continue their journey and almost run out of oxygen. When they reach their destination at Balhae station, they desperately fill up the tanks and manage to survive. The series then flashes back to the past and Dr. Song is seen trying to find out the truth about her sister's death. She opens an encrypted file from her sister's workstation trying to find out what she was working on at the lunar station. She eventually cracks the code and a message pops up on the screen that reads, Find Luna. Back to the present, the crew comes across an old corpse that has physical signs similar to that of drowning. They are confused because there couldn't possibly be enough water on the moon for a person to drown and die. The crew is not able to identify the dead body from their database and are puzzled to see an automatic weapon in the corpse's possession, suggesting that he was a mercenary. Moreover, all the systems of the station are functional and the station lacks the dangerous radiation that had allegedly wiped out the staff five years prior. Dr. Song's belief that Saw is keeping them in the dark becomes stronger and she suggests performing an autopsy of the corpse but Captain orders everyone to stick to the plan and look for the command center instead. They eventually locate the center and bring the massive facility back to life. However, 
The communication system is down and the crew isn't able to contact the mission control. The radiation levels in the control room seem normal unlike what the mission control had told them. Dr. Song boldly takes off her life support to prove that they are not surrounded by high levels of radiation and everyone follows her lead. She again suggests performing a full inspection of the station but Han reminds her that it's not their job to investigate the cause of the Balhae accident. They are here to retrieve the samples which is their first and only priority. There are three storages in the facility where the sample could possibly be found so the crew splits up into teams and search the station for viable samples. A crew member named Dr. Hong, a soldier E2 and the captain head for storage 1. Tisik, Sun, Su Chan, E1 Air sent to storage 2. Meanwhile, Chief Gong, Dr. Song, and Jisoo go to storage 3. Dr. Song tells the crew that as soon as they locate the capsule, they must check the thermoregulator to make sure that it's at an extremely low temperature. On the way to storage 3, Jisoo reveals that Captain Han returned back from retirement on this mission for a special purpose. He wants to get his sick daughter access to a higher class of water. It turns out that after the great drought, one in every ten children passes away. Meanwhile, Team 1 comes across a jammed gate. When they force open the door, they come across a number of corpses, frightening the team. A quick assessment of the situation shows that the victims were desperately trying to escape and the area was shut down in an emergency right after the accident. The situation is contrary to the government report which stated that the victims died way before the shutdown. Dr. Song observes the bodies remotely from her wrist computer and comments on their characteristics of drowned bodies. She insists on checking the infirmary to access their medical records and Han rudely turns her down, telling her to take her mind off her personal curiosity. The first and second group eventually reach their respective destinations, but the visible capsules are empty or missing and the storage units look as if someone already raided the place for the samples. In the meantime, Team 3 detects a foreign presence moving around the station. When the head of security Gong goes around to inspect, Jisoo tells Dr. Song that he knows about her late sister and empathizes with her. He also reveals that if she wishes to check the infirmary to get to the bottom of the truth, he would cover for her. After a brief pause, Dr. Song decides to utilize the opportunity. Somewhere else, crew member Su Chan of Team 2 sees a corpse with a capsule in his hands. He touches the corpse, which, upon contact, releases minuscule particle droplets that enter Su Chan's eyes. After Dr. Song leaves for the infirmary, Jisoo enters storage 3 on his own and looks around for samples. In the process, he drops his flashlight. When he tries to fetch it, some invisible force seemingly pulls it away, frightening the hell out of him. He collects himself and brushes it aside as hallucination. Back to Team 2, after failing to locate a viable capsule, they head back to the command center. Han, on the other hand, monitors Dr. Song's movements from his watch and orders her to rejoin Jisoo immediately. Inside Storage 3, Jisoo notices a viable capsule near the flashlight and manages to retrieve it. The capsule appears to be filled with water. When Dr. Song returns to Storage 3, she notices some unknown entity attacking Jisoo and lifting him up in the air by his neck before dropping him to his death. Dr. Song also notices the entity taking the capsule away before disappearing. Soon, others arrive and learn about the incident. Expectedly, they find it hard to believe Drive. Song's account but a quick analysis of Jisoo's body reveals a fractured skull, ankle, and arm, which couldn't have resulted from a fall. Han orders everyone to return to the command center before going through drive. Song's body camera with Gong. It turns out the intruder escaped through the ventilation system. Since the intruder realized the value of the sample and hence took it away, Song theorizes that the intruder is a human. Back at the command center, team member Tisik tries to establish contact with the mission control, and after failing to succeed, he hypothesizes that there might be a problem with the radio tower outside. Suddenly, Su Chan starts shaking violently and expels unnatural amounts of water. Dr. Hong orders everyone to step back and put on their hazmat suits. Han, Gong, and Song also learn about the situation and rush back to the command center. Dr. Hong tries her best to save Su Chan but he eventually dies from drowning symptoms, much like the corpses littering the station. Dr. Hong tells Han that they must quarantine Su Chan's body until they determine the exact cause of death. She proposes moving him to the main lab infirmary and performing an autopsy right away. 
Chief Gong is shaken by his brother's death and Han attempts to comfort him. Han also finally gives Song permission to go through the medical records of the Balhae crew who lost their lives in the accident. The crew also learns that the entity that killed Jisoo can access areas that are not in the station's blueprints. Han decides to search the ventilation shaft with Gong and E2 while team members Tisik and Sun are ordered to establish contact with the mission control. Sun is severely demoralized by the recent events and Tisik tries to cheer him up while trying to establish communication with mission control. Dr. Hong performs an autopsy of Su Chan's body while Song and another soldier named E1 unsuccessfully try to access the encrypted medical records of the crew who lost their lives in the accident five years ago. Song decides to secure tissue samples from other bodies and trace them back to when Su Chan's symptoms broke out. Meanwhile, Hong, Gong, and E2 enter the ventilation system to look for the entity and come across drawings seemingly made by it. Soon, they notice a biosignal approaching them from the front and wait to come face to face with the entity. However, it passes by them. As Song collects tissue samples from the dead bodies, E1 wonders if he also got infected since he came in contact with Su Chan. Suddenly, Dr. Hong calls Song back to the infirmary and the latter asks E1 to take care of the samples for her before heading back. On her way, she suddenly stops before the data storage chamber of the station. After a brief pause, she rejoins E1 to collect more samples. Afterward, they return back to the infirmary and Dr. Hong reveals that Su Chan drowned to death and the water rose up from the inside. Song goes through the samples collected from other bodies but fails to locate anything unusual. Han and others continue to follow the entity's biosignal, which leads them to a gate that requires level 1 access. Left with no choice, Han and his team return back to the command center. There, Tisik informs him that there's a problem with the digital unit connected to the communications tower and someone needs to go outside to switch the equipment while another edits the protocol inside and reboots the system. Without blinking, Han volunteers to do the job. Back at the infirmary, Dr. Hong shows Song Su Chan's blood sample which contains an unknown substance. Soon, Han arrives and informs them about the latest development. Before he leaves, Song privately talks to him and expresses amazement at the intruder not attacking her even when she got really close to it. Moreover, since it moves by using shafts and it always manages to escape because it's a step ahead, it seems like the entity is familiar with the internal structure of the facility. Song strongly believes that the entity could be a human survivor from five years ago. Even though Han finds it hard to believe, Song tells him that if the government could be wrong about the radiation levels, it very well could be mistaken about survivors. Han retorts that if it was really a survivor it wouldn't have stolen the sample and attacked them. As Han heads out to repair the communication system, the movie flashes back to the past. Han is seen walking to the National Medical Center. His daughter is admitted to the hospital and the doctor tells him that he needs a higher water classification to stop her condition from worsening. If her condition worsens, she could lose her legs forever. Back in the present, Song and Hong analyze the water in Suchin's blood. It has the solubility and surface tension of water but different mass and density. Also, it doesn't contain any microorganisms and hence is similar to distilled water. Meanwhile, Han climbs down the station using a safety harness to fix the communication system. However, out of nowhere, the defunct platform elevator below him becomes operational and shoots above, knocking the safety harness out. Han narrowly saves his life and holds on to a wall until the crew above drops another rope. Unfortunately, the elevator again free falls from the top, and the crew is forced to drop the rope. Han manages to anchor his rope on the wall before jumping out of the elevator's way. In the process, he damages his life support system. He rapidly loses his oxygen but insists on returning only after fixing the communication system. He eventually brings the system back up but before he can return, he collapses on the ground. Back at the infirmary, Song points out that the water in Su Chan's body stopped increasing in quantity after his death. Since it multiplies rapidly once the host is infected and stops its activity when the host dies, water could be a virus. Meanwhile, when Hans opens his eyes, he finds himself inside the station. It turns out Gong and E2 brought him back after he lost consciousness due to lack of oxygen. They return back to the command center and to their dismay, they learn that there's no exchange of signals from the mission control despite the system not showing any malfunction. Suddenly, 
the computer detects an unknown signal coming in from outside and being sent to storage 3 area. Han and others immediately rush there and investigate Jisoo's body. Upon searching his corpse, they discover a mobile device using which he had been using to maintain periodic contact with an outside organization. It turns out he was secretly acting as an agent for RX, a rival space research organization that also wants the samples. Han's team finally manages to establish contact with Earth using the device and Director Choi expresses regret over the death of three crew members, including the spy and Han reminds her that she approved the co-pilot to be changed at the last minute. He also tells Choi about the survivor and the lack of radiation levels in the station. The lack of reaction from her makes Han suspect that Choi hasn't been completely honest with him. He warns her that if she's been keeping information from him, the success of this operation will no longer be his interest. Choi assures him that she has no reason to hide things from him and that the rescue ships will be sent after they retrieve the samples. As Han and others prepare to look for the intruder, Song and her team return back to the command center. Song asks Han if he knew that the sample they were sent to retrieve is water. Han's guilty silence answers the question and a flashback shows him being briefed about the water that Song's sister discovered on the moon. Han finally breaks the news that it was that water which killed everyone at the Balhae station. The lunar water multiplies endlessly which makes it seem like an amazing resource. If one could control its multiplication and commercialize it has the potential of saving mankind. It's also revealed that the lunar water springs into action after coming in contact with a living organism. Song feels angry that the scientists at Balhae died due to the lunar water but the government covered up everything to hide the existence of lunar water. As a way to compensate for lying to her, Han agrees to let her access the data storage of the station. There, they come across huge amounts of data. Suddenly, a green leaf emerging from the ground catches their attention. When they remove what seems like a lid, they discover the basement covered by green plants, much to their surprise. To know what happens next, comment below for next part, so we can bring next part, as soon possible.